Hi, I'm Robbie MC from Insight Media. Today we're out on the streets of Bolton interviewing homeless people, uh, people from different cultures, um, trying to find out why they're on the streets, what's led them to be there, get a little bit of a background on their issues, anything that they might have suffered financially, uh, politically, even controversially. Really? It's not, I mean, for a start, there is no homeless. I've never met them. I think the homeless are fucking bad. What happens is you walk in somewhere, and you go, I've lost my phone. You're homeless. Yes, sir. I'm out there. End up on the streets because of the basically universal credits. It was kind of weird, and they all had a story to tell. Like there was uh, one guy who's had his universal credit messed up, and he's uh, he's now been forced to live on the streets. He's had his housing benefits stopped. No way of getting the property. Another man. Um, a couple of years ago, he was very healthy. Uh, went through a few relationship issues. Turned to drink. Uh, before he did this, he was uh, heavily involved in raising money for charity. He went on marathon runs for cancer research, British Art Foundation. <coughs> but to see the guy on the street, the next man could have probably prejudged him, stereotyped him, and thought, alcoholic, drug addict. When we spoke to him, that wasn't the case. Right, like I say, I got the name Jesus from Salvation Army. Proper name's Anthony. I originally come from Teesside. But my whole identity, everything change to the homes. It's a weird shift in perception. You get it from both sides, you do it yourself. Yeah. You're not you're a person without a house. Homes within you build, isn't it? So I've had loads of homes. Oh, I've just made a new one over there now. Yeah? That's in your head. But property, houses, that's different. And they're forever feeding you. And I have found people that uh, do that and they try and feed you. Feed you. Home people to eat. But um, the situation in this place quite literally is homeless welfare, apart from one or two members of staff, uh, comes to the room that I dealt with. She's a uh, <laughs> compassionate professional as I wound her up with. <laughs> um, other than that, they have no definitely welfare at all. Hello, I'm Dee Keynes here representing the Insight Project. Basically, today, me and my friend Robbie MC have been going around interviewing the homeless finding out the issues of why they're on the street, how hard it is to get a home and why we as a nation are not pulled together to help the homeless out. At the moment, the people's kind of controversial issues mainly seem to be going towards like the imports, maybe what's going on in Syria, the refugees coming in. Now it's good to give help, we have to help everybody, it's humanity. The thing is, we need to be helping our homeless and our ex-forces just as much, but we need to be helping more, for not dividing issues, hating the refugees, or then blaming it on the homeless being on the street when we should be helping the homeless. It's about coming together. At this time, uh, I ended up going out to uh, Bulgaria doing some lodge work out there. Rung them up, as I said. Uh, suspending my benefit for two weeks. Uh, comes back, rungs them up, supposed to uh, reinstate it. Uh, months later, landlord comes round, tells me my benefit's been stopped before I found out. When rung, um, the basically the university credits, the uh, inquiries up, and they told me to, I've got to ring the compliance up. So, ring the compliance number, um, they say it's a period when I was out of the country, told them that I've done what they told me to do, said that they'd lift the sanction. Uh, two months later, pays me the money, which I thought was for two, two months. Uh, the month that they didn't pay me, and the following month. And, I catch keeps me rent for three a week out of the next month. A week later, landlord comes round asking for his money. Now he's not not rang me, not messaged me, no notes in the flat. Landlord's got a key to the flat to get in whenever he wants. Um, I think um, no contact made anything. Uh, so I end up using the money, thinking it was my money. Landlord kicks me out, tells me I've got 24 hours to get out of the flat which I've also just found out legally on someone that knows a bit about legal stuff that that's illegal. I'm supposed to give you two months notice. Um, I had no choice. I had a key to the flat. I had to get all my stuff out. And this is that's it. I'm Damien from Wake Up Bolton. Um, first of all, let's speak about homelessness and um, you know the issues surrounding homelessness one of the 
biggest issues that we've got is is the fact that people in society you know turn away from from homelessness and uh, almost uh, uh, brush it under the carpet and we need change it's time that we we have change and people uh, behave and react differently basically this, this car's basically those that's generally on the streets basically police can't really move you on anywhere because uh, basically vacancy acts you know you're not supposed to sleep on the streets anywhere on the streets so this car basically is just to let them know that you're not going anywhere to go and basically you've not got anywhere to sleep um, the local government and national government both ignore the problem they fix figures they uh, create um, uh, you, you know scenarios and situations uh, which are which are unreal regarding homelessness and you've got to ask yourself why did they do this kind of thing and the reason is is once somebody is homeless um, you know they don't look very good to a town or a city when they're hanging around they don't generate any revenue because they can't charge them council tax or they can't get a job so you, you, you can't um, have uh, uh, you know general taxation from them so they in effect they're no use to society so the, the, the government don't don't want them the housing do not house you right homeless welfare actually actively hate you yeah they um I can bring plenty of people witnesses that have been stood outside an office and heard them just cackle and slag people off bottle, bottle community kitchen why here yeah, they didn't use to start charging for your meals. It used to be free meals, free clothes, uh, free toiletries. Now it's 50p per item for your toiletries, uh, your clothing, and you've got to pay 50p for your meals. Um, as Dorothy is caused by the rich from the elitist point of view, so they really hate anybody who's poor. And so what they do is they they want to cause pain and suffering to those who are, are poor. In a nutshell. What I would say to people is, you know, go out there, make change, uh, help with local community pro projects, donate things, set up your own community projects, go and work with uh, with local groups and organisations and help, you know, help these people out and feeding them and helping them and showing them some compassion is, uh, you know, is a positive thing and it, it, it will help uh, enrich people's lives. But the, the real um, a solution is to, you know, make change in in other ways, and that's to put pressure on the government, on local government and national government, to address this housing problem, whether it's uh, a case of uh, affordable housing, whether it's project schemes to get people back into into work and education and rehabilitation and whatever that might be. What I'm getting is the refugees are getting help and they're coming from countries where they've seen the family slaughtered, they need support so they're on one side and they're, they're, they're frightened on the other side. The community is then getting angry because they can't find jobs, places to live and it's hitting deeper to the homeless people that are on the street and not getting the support what they need. And what we need to be doing is giving the same help on both sides, cutting out this middleman of segregation in this nation between homeless, refugees and the corporations and bankers could be putting money in to help our homeless. Our ex forces are fighting these wars abroad and then they see refugees coming in. Now they need help but so do the ex forces and we both need help equally. There shouldn't be hate on any side and that is the problem with this world at the moment but mainly with this nation. It's tough. It's like you've got you've got to find you've got to find somewhere warm for sleep. Shelter where you're at, where you're, it's, 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 it's raining or cold. There's been time when I was in an hostel, got kicked out of the hostel, this was in Eccles, and I had to get three doors, two coming out of the wall, another one propping them up, and then put on, and then put something else over the top of it and sleep in there. And they're there, out of deprivation, and they've lost everything, and they've had in the life, they've had self esteem, and they've lost their self esteem, they want to, they've got mental health issues. Um, all sorts of factors that have drawn them to where they are today. Drugs. Drugs, alcohol, family dynamics. Uh, living on the streets, I lived on the streets in Manchester for like 12 months. But that, 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 that's like a community, that, it's like a community. It is, everyone looks after each other. It's like, you, you'll, you'll have a couple of people going looking for somewhere to sleep for the night, and you'll have a couple of people going, going out make, making whatever money you can, getting whatever food you can, going to soup kitchens in the night time. But like, don't, obviously benefits will stop your door and whatnot. Don't have you ever find anywhere to live or anything. Um, you get one hour at Urban Outreach with the head of 
uh, housing welfare. He, he does nothing really. He, he contacted people about me and when I got back to it his statement was I'm off on holiday for a couple of weeks and have you tried the bomb board? The bomb board's the very first thing you try and that was all blocked to me months ago. That's the head. When I sleep, basically don't sleep. Um, walk around all night, got to keep warm. By walking around it keeps your, your blood pumping on your body, keeps it warm. Um, basically it's not safe. Um, you get your head down, you become a target. Uh, people coming up, kicking you out of your sleeping bag, whatever. Um, I've had people that's in tents. At like this time of year it's starting to get winter now, so uh, yeah, keep moving around, keep yourself safe and don't become a target really. I want to address something which is, uh, which is, which is a really important point. The, uh, a lot of people ask me the question, and, and, or they'll say to me, well, these people who are, who are homeless are, are often on, on drink and drugs. You know, they just, they just get drunk and, and, and they have drugs. Well, let me tell you this. If you were living on the streets in fear of somebody beating you up, in f wondering where your next meal's coming from, not knowing what's going to happen next, with no, with no security um, or protection, then you, know, you will so want to soften the blow with drug drugs or alcohol. The only way to stop people uh, with, uh, from using, abusing drugs or al alcohol who are homeless is to give them an home, give them the, uh, the infrastructure around them to, to help them, you know, whether it's means of education or, or, or classes or medical treatment, whatever that might be, and create a, st a stable situation for them. Think about your own lives, think about times when you've been in difficulties, whether it's been a, a relationship breakup, whether it's been a death, whether you've been in debt, whether you've had a problem with, with uh, you know, drugs or alcohol, whatever it might be. Just think about that and thinking about, think about trying to deal with that problem without a roof over your head. It's a sobering thought. Martin, I was talking to a young girl called Pamela. She's been on the streets for a couple of years. To look at her, you wouldn't think it, because this girl knows how to keep her clean, she's got survival skills. She goes into McDonald's and places like that, the marketplace, to wash herself, to clean herself. She eats from skips. Something to think about. She also started talking a little bit deeper about young girls in the area, age 13, 14, on the streets. And forced into giving oral sex and prostitution just for a shelter over their head. Personally speaking, I think it's wrong and the world needs to wake up.